Welcome to the lair, which is where I have moved to. Well, not fully. I do have an upstairs as well, but this is the basement of the new house that we are renting, which is why everything's been crazy. So I'm sorry that my content's been so sporadic recently. I still have so many videos from the Texas Wing coming soon. We're a little bit of a wreck down here, blinding. Ooh, but I wanna give you guys a quick new office tour. I was gonna show you outside as well, but it's getting a little dark and there's a basket in the backyard. That's all it is. You can go check my Instagram story from today. Otherwise, I wanna take you through where I'm gonna be for the next year, creating content, training, but ultimately, give you guys like a full every disc that I own tour, which is only every disc that I own for now. If you guys are on my Patreon, you'll know about that probably later tonight or tomorrow. If you didn't know I had a Patreon, it's basically just to support me. And there's a Discord with a little behind the scenes, but nothing too crazy. I'm gonna move this guy over there. We'll start taking a look at all of my discs. But before that, we'll show you the content side of things. You guys might've noticed I added an extra rack to this thing. I only had these three before, and now it is four. This is literally just Walmart shoe racks. If you buy two shoe racks, you can get a triple, one shoe rack, two shoe racks, and then you just go every other with these bars, and super cheap. I think it's like 30 bucks a pop for each of these, which for disc storage is pretty cheap. So interesting thing about like kind of the Denver area is there's not too many basement places. So wanted to find one that did have one so I can kind of create this space. <laughs> that being said, beggars can't really be choosers and they're not probably gonna end up doing too much to the walls around here. We'll see, maybe there's some studs that I can find. See, no, it's just insulation covered in tarp on top of uh, really pretty brick over here, but it already gets cold enough that I'm really glad that there is some insulation. Part of me wants to like, do some artwork down here on this tarp and then just replace it before we leave, which might not be a terrible idea. I don't know if I'm allowed to listen to the landlord. If you're my landlord, stop watching this. Quick first question though is that I've gotten before is like, hey, did you move out of the area? No, we're actually still in a very similar area. So if you actually want to send anything to help furnish the space or have this or mystery boxes that you want me to do on Banana Froth, which I will be starting up again soon, I'll leave my PO box right here and link down in the description. Super excited to get back onto things, but went to Texas for those couple weeks. That was crazy. Austin was a, Bad experience overall. While I'm rambling, I'm just gonna show you kind of my setup and tear down this place, but uh, it was a weird experience. Got some good content from it. I still have two more AB videos coming. I have something with Isaac Robinson. But right when we got back, we had to like figure out a place, sign a lease, start the moving process. I played two tournaments over the last couple weekends. Played mostly good with one really bad round. Moved in over the course of a week, just by myself with the van, making a bunch of trips, and then unloading everything. Now, finally, I'm getting everything closer to settled. We haven't officially even been here for like a full week yet. This is kind of the start of that. And this is the last space to get ready. I wanted to make sure everything else in life was good to go. Content might even be a little slower this week because on Friday, my wife and I are just headed for a chill trip to Moab. I might film something on Sunday uh, there because that's the first place that I filmed any videos. And in Austin, I got to play the first course that I ever played in disc golf. So what we'll back to back kind of like where it all began videos coming out. That's a little bit of the life update. After I get back from that trip, I'll have some tournaments and stuff that I'm going to be playing, but I'm going to try to get back closer to daily content because that's really what I love doing. And I want this space that like essentially the space is designed for me to be able to get way more content up and like better quality than I ever have before. Also, if you guys are wondering where my tripod is, I literally just up the standing desk and then put you guys on my putting putters, which one of the big benefits is, if you guys know, from the way beginning on the channel, I used to be great at putting when I was living in the van. And I put 100% C1X for a couple tournaments, and then I started sucking at putting, because in the van I was able to just take out a basket and putt, and now, it is one, two, three, four, eight, nine full steps, just about. It's like 26 feet, which is a really good distance to get really good at putting. I have more in the backyard. If you are a company watching this, first off, every company, if you're watching this, I'm gonna start reaching out to you guys to give you guys new addresses if you have sent me stuff before so that you don't just send stuff to my apartment because I can't get it. But if you're a company and you would like to have a basket, like a pro level basket featured in tons and tons of videos, I like this basket. Upgrades would be fine though. All that being said, let's take a quick look around. First off, we got this big light which are gonna shine over into here, which is a nice little storage area underneath the steps that lead down here. We've got my little charging station, my iPad, all like camera chargers, which this is the camera right here, this one, you guys. Uh, GoPro chargers, I have kind of a GoPro stand here, which I had those time lapses that I filmed on that. This guy will have to put up at the end of this video to really christen the space. And then I got like a light over here and then a couple other lenses. Real quick for you camera nerds, I shoot on a Sony 20 to 70 F4. What I initially shot on with this camera was this, which is just the kit lens. It's a 3.5 to 5.6 aperture, 28 to 70. Uh, wasn't very good for vlog style because 28, if you guys are camera nerds. So right now I'm at 20, so I'm pretty wide. If I go to 28, this is where it is. So it's fine. 
but this is a little bit more like we're talking to buddies. Just a little more storage under here, got boxes, the aperture knockoff, it's a small rig, RC120B, makes some noise, not enough to be worried though. I got my camera bag, and then a couple of these which I had in the old office. I never really used my whiteboard too much. Oh hey, that's like a mirror, that's actually, I like that shot, that's pretty cool. <laughs> not a lot going on down here. Over on this side I have my like label printer, a couple books. This one I think I'm gonna read just for kind of the mental side of golf on top of the golf is not a game of perfect book that I have listened to, which I didn't say this, but I just searched audiobook on YouTube and it popped up. So if you guys like cable management, just close your eyes for three seconds. <laughs> we, just, we got everything set up. It is not pretty. Water bottle stay hydrated. This is kind of my voiceover mic. Sometimes I use it. I don't really stream, but if I was to, putters, of course, lefty. Lefty take two. I have my wrong foot forward. Lefty. Wow, put the dominant foot forward, that'll help. Cowboy hat, this is my trash can for now. And then over here, we just have kind of some workout stuff in case I need to do anything here. This is kind of grip strength training, some dumbbells. This is a massage gun. These are for kind of forearm work right here to get those jacked forearms. These little storage things came with the place, whatever. And then the lab hanging out. We'll see if it makes its return and then starting to move into like stuff that's gonna be for content here soon. All these shoes, the video that I feel like I've been promising for a year and a half about which disc golf shoes are best, or in my opinion. I saved all those, and I haven't made that video yet. Coming to Banana Frost sometime soon. Let's start going through all this craziness and talk through basically all my discs. Not too much that's super interesting. I will be teasing all of like the Banana Frost and main channel reviews that I'll be having coming soon. Oh, I cannot wait, I cannot wait to get back on a, like, a normal content schedule because this has just like been my life for a while and I feel like a part of me is missing since I haven't been creating nearly as much content. I will be having a video going live on Infinite's channel soon about how I travel with discs and has, since I've done that a good few times now, how like what I figured out as the best case scenario for me in traveling with discs. One thing I do think I'm gonna set up real fast is this MVP pod system which is actually really sweet. It's kind of like they hold all the putters together. Uh, and that way I can pull out more than just those five marvels kind of sitting up next to that workout stand. Nice. Nice and useful. I just wish it would lock a little bit better on this middle part. It's the biggest disc I own right there. I literally have no idea where any of these are. I just kind of moved everything. And I had it all organized in a specific way before. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with kind of giveaway discs over on this side. Sentimental disc and infinite disc over on that side. I, I have no idea, honestly, but we're gonna start with putters. You know, maybe we'll just do putters, mids, fairways, drivers. I think we'll do that. I'm not gonna go through all these like random giveaway discs, but Shrike, Reptilian Carnivore, uh, ABC Beeline, Ledgestone Nuke OS. I'm not doing the putters, mids, fairways. I'm gonna, they're probably not gonna be all organized today. We'll say that much. I'm not in a very organized mood. All these bags I think are also just gonna go in that storage over there. I have a lot of bags. I don't feel like I need all of them. All these from Putter Wars, the Lynx. I got a butter, a couple Nomads. So here's a little hectic. Okay, these, I'm just gonna show you the back side of these. I filmed videos with these yesterday. Incredible. I cannot wait to show you. They actually made my bag, surprisingly. Very surprisingly to me. These are also in my bag and they're still available. I also have a ton of dynasties left. Check out these Metal Flake dynasties. We ran them as kind of a special run, uh, very limited drop, only 100 with this infinite mini bomber stamp. Frankly, they haven't sold super well. We started them on the VIP site, so I think that lost a lot of the hype. If you want to snag some of these, definitely do. But if you want to wait for my tour series and save your money for that, do that as well and tell your local store to buy it. Ooh, I think these are all destroyers. This is like, I threw these last year as my distance drivers. Now it's Emperors, which I'm basically still throwing Destroyers. If you guys saw the last AB video, I ended up saying that Infinite was better and then I called my Emperor Destroyer. The only thing I remember about this Destroyer is I brought it as my Water Destroyer to Fountain Hills when I was doing my form change with Drew and I parked whole one on a hyzer at 390 feet. And I was like, wow, I'm getting some distance. And now I feel like I'm probably throwing a nine or 10 speed on that hole on a similar line and getting there, which is crazy to think about. That, that was like, what, four or five, six months ago, maybe? No, oh, my Ducker Destroyers, Nate Turner. These were a lot of fun. These lightweight ones were bombers. Just a couple more of those. Basically very similar to the one that Ganon signed, that Emperor, Shattervan 2.0, Metal Flake Champ Destroyers. Oh my gosh. Memory Lane, KC Wide Open 2023. This is gonna have to go in my sentimental disc pile since I'm not throwing destroyers anymore. Well, my, again, I had a lot of history with some of these destroyers. This is the one that I aced with, with Joel Freeman and Joe Revere on the card. My ninth ace ever at uh, West Creek. Then How the West was won. Right after I shot a 1050 rated round. A couple more of those Metal Flake Champ 2.0s. First real big bomber disc, that Jessica Weiss Echo Star Destroyer. It's kind of like Memory Lane. Like these are the first ones that I really pulled out from Infinite, the alpacas. Let's see if they still puck good. Oh yeah. 
Mmm, yeah. My like and subscribe alpacas, don't forget to do that. Please subscribe. I wanna to try to get to 50K by June 12th. If you guys have any like punishments or like things that if we hit milestones getting up to 50, then 75, then 100K, you have ideas for that, please DM me over on Instagram because honestly there's like 90 something thousand of you guys who return every month to watch videos uh, and I'm at like 30 something thousand subscribers. I much more care that you're here to watch, but like the vanity metric of subscribers would be pretty cool to be a little bit bigger. <laughs> what we got here? Okay, this is something that I think I opened. This is from Noah Massengill and it's one that I ended up selling in a mystery box a while back when I was running like, I would have all these extra discs and I would sell them in three disc mystery boxes. And then I had a lot of fun dyeing this disc. This is my first foray into the lotion dye technique. I think it came out looking really good. Also, my wife was able to help me by making stencils on a Cricut. A really sweet dye on it. I think this looks incredible. But this dynasty, I remember because it was this versus the CD1 that I tried to bag during the middle of last year. I had that video from way back when and uh, it somehow found its way back to me with this new dye. So that is really special. All right, more infinite discs over here. And next we got some just stable nine speeds. This is basically all my bag discs from last year. Shattered Van 2.0 Flat Top Firebirds, which came out not super overstable. Like basically very similar to these not Flat Top Champ Firebirds. This is the one that was in my bag all of last year. Got a lot of birdies with this guy. The Halo Scepters that I have are like cool, but something about this just feels right for that overstable nine speed. And so even like the, I have this ESP cap wrap and then these Jawbreakers, the Flex ones, they seem kind of right, but something about just like this Champ style, maybe I have to go back to these but I think maybe I might try out Metal Flake Sea Blend Scepters. Last year's bag disc. And then we have some fun ones. So this is a Rally, which I was very considering bagging. And then it just is a little flippier than I want for that really straight slot. Um, we already talked about a disc that is actually probably gonna replace what this would do. So fun disc, good disc. I just don't think it's exactly what I needed for that slot. We have some FD1s, which will have a chance to make the bag this year. Strikes, which if you guys know me, you know I love my strikes. These are really solid. Not gonna be throwing them anymore, I don't think. They just don't make too many of them anymore. And then Ultras, which also have the chance to make the bag, but I think with Zones, Chariots, and then like Scepters, it's not really a potential spot for these, but they still go in that and maybe has a spot this year. Oh, I gotta take this Black Renew bag out more. This thing is sweet. It holds it very well. I think I just like, it was buried in my closet. And I pulled it out and was like, oh, I forgot that I had you. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to start using this more just because it's so much lighter than all the other ones. MD5, Buzz OS, Regular Buzz, Meteors, Peace Trains, Paradox, all the flippy mids. This is the Iron Samurai that I aced with on the second shot that forced Eagle to go back to Disc Mania, so that was a fun one. This disc, if you haven't seen my video throwing these dino discs, you guys are missing out. It was super, super fun. This thing is 130 gram Glow Stegosaurus, which basically is like the mid-range glitch. I honestly might prefer it to the glitch, to warm up and play catch. It just goes in the basket every single time. I did actually make that. Zona West that I aced with, fun doomsday weirdo disc, neon weirdo disc from Luft, ring top zone. Okay, boom, bye bye. What's next? What is this? Oh, these are all the drivers of that same exact category. 130 gram T-Rex, Royal Strive. I think these normal stock runs just came out. Go snag them on Infinite, they're incredible. The Clash Disc Tone that I really beat up and warped. That was a fun one. I really thought I was gonna get that 500, but it didn't. I think moving on a little bit, these are mostly infinite. Yep. Bunch of scepters, Mayas and Romans and Pharaohs and Czars. Oh my. Jeez. This is too many discs. Oh man. These are the only ones of these ever. Texas Swing Stamped Tour Series Run Discs. <sighs> Super sick. I think there's only like four of those in existence. It's more scepters and dynasties. And another bag to the pot. This also is gonna go in this pile. Massive shout out. This is from Goodyear Disc Golf. It's a Nidus mystery box. It was sent to me a while ago. And unfortunately, I have not even had the time to open it. Yikes. I will be making videos on everything that people send me. This whole season has just been way more insane than I thought. And I'm really am sorry about that. Bunch more infinite discs. Cohorts, tombs, rays, ruin, consus. Oh my gosh. I gotta throw these again. I think this is the last bag. Halo Arrow, really fun disc. A couple Cloud Stones, these are incredible. The old, the OG Spores. One of the kind of funny things is these two discs right here, I didn't know that they had my address or whatever, but they sent me two Christmas discs. A Glow Beast and a DX Invader. These just randomly showed up in like those manila envelopes close to the holidays. I was like, what the heck? Infinite, or anybody doesn't send you stuff. Challenger, Bullet. Iron Stones. This is my like, probably will not be here with me soon pile. Oh wait, what are these? What are these guys? Some Midnight Pal 2s. Here's a Nate Turner stamped origin, that'd be fun. These are all a bunch of old pures. Bought these pures in Vegas. 
right before I won my first disc golf tournament, which was an MA2. This is my first MA1 win right here, up in Illinois, the Chanahan Classic. I have a pair in here that I keep in my keepsakes, and then these are unthrown. I've never thrown these, and I was really tempted to just pop them there, but I will not do that. Kind of crazy. All these discs on the floor right here. All these discs up there. Oh, there's still so much to sort through. All right, real quick, we'll clean this whole mess up. All right, time to go over just what's up there, and then also what's down here, and then what's in here. I really hope I know how to edit a video, otherwise this one could get long. <laughs> First off, we got some fun stuff in here. To talk about, honestly, I just got a bunch of minis. Shout out RTC, made some fun ones for me. Got some Ducker ones, got some old Danza ones. The first runs that I ever did. I hope I never have to wear these again. Some Gators, my competitor pass from Casey Wide Open when I cashed. The grip equipment thing that was on my bag that Simon signed. Grip stuff, shout out Dirty Birdie for the sauce. This kind of stuff is kind of crazy. I don't know if I'll ever use it. I know my buddy Braden Sides does a lot. Some disc stops, which I'm gonna throw on the thing down here just to have an aim point. Like, what the cash stash plate is they gave it to me all the stuff is still up basically just because no i'm cut off <sighs> need to go through this first we got the trash panda box nocturnal box you can go check out banana froth if you want to see my unboxing of this but it's pretty sweet i was looking at the earth day bingo thing that's in here but there's a sticker and an earth day bingo thing and apparently you can get free discs and free udisc for life so for a year i might be doing some of this because that looks sick all the inner cores Got this chip locked game. I know that they've been uh, sponsoring some grip locked stuff. I still haven't been able to get out and play it. There's just been so much stuff that I wanted to do that I haven't been able to yet. But first, before we get into the view stuff, these are all of my special discs. I'm gonna throw them up here. So we'll take them out one at a time. First off, we have this AVRX3. This is that first disc I ever got that my buddy Sam Walsh gave me. Massive shout out to him. He's the one who got me into disc golf just over two years ago. Three, I hope if I ever do anything cool on Pro Tour, this is in the bag to tap out. If I win or if, I don't know. Probably never ever gonna happen, but. Cool disc, lots of sentiment. Hope to do something cool with it one day. Cash stash disc, I just kept kind of some of my fun discs from different runs. It's a Mana, Jordan stamped, Jump Band stamped, Supra, Glow Supra that I did when I was over at Marcus's house, who runs stuff for Drew and has a stamping machine. This is the first disc golf event that I ever played. Sorry for that voice crack. It is an ESP zone from the Groves seventh annual ace race. I gotta get out with some of these discs and throw them on a course that I, there's no chance I can lose them because it'd be really fun to be able to do, but this is the first disc I ever got. I also had an Undertaker because you got two discs and I threw that into a field in Maricopa. So who knows? I got my pair of first run pures. It's the only first run disc that I have. I just wrote first run on the side of it. Maybe an homage to that coming at some point soon. Who knows? No one's, no one's ever gonna know. But then we got Mako 3, the Ducker Stamp Mako 3. This is just all like custom stamps that I've done. I like keeping at least one of all these, a Banana Club stamp. This is the Buzz SS. And now some fun sentimental stuff. We have a Paul McBeth Five Claw TI Zone. I just pulled this in a mystery box that Discraft sent to me. I don't know if they put this in their special, but it was really cool. I might sell it at some point. I'm not super sentimental about this unless they're like my specific ones. Speaking of my specific ones, this is from the Infinite Discs Canab Campout. Kind of fun that it was sponsored by Infinite. It's the first tournament that I ever played. I played MA2, I think I shot like 890 rated or something. Super windy day two, but this is an Iblin Pharaoh, which 167, absolute bomber. I maybe should take this out into a field and see if this is the first disc I can like officially throw 500 feet. This is also how I learned that like if you are feeling the flight plate and it feels thinner than the rim, it's gonna be more of a bomber just because more of the weight's distributed to the edges. Prototype. That one was for reviews. I'll actually probably put it in my review pile instead of here because I threw that. This one I haven't thrown. It's the same colorway as the one that I threw when I beat Simon for his bag, which is just a YouTube video. I didn't actually beat Simon. Everyone who says that, stop saying it. You're making me look silly because it didn't actually happen. <laughs> Next up, we got the first ever tester disc that I was sent. This is the Infinite Disc Cone Suit, the S Blend. They said that they did not have a lot of these and Infinite sent me one, which I just feel so honored by this whole relationship. And it's been a little crazy with the craziness of not being able to get content for you. It's been the same with Infinite. It's just my mind is fried. Luckily, we're settled now for a while. First ever tester disc that I ever had. So that's special to me. Now we're moving into the goodies. This disc, video coming soon. You don't need to know about it. These putters are my peers for my first ever MPO win. This is an inner core that I aced with. Jesse sent me these inner cores. He was one of the first ever videos that I did when I was traveling through before my channel had any sort of notoriety, but I aced with this in Alabama. And so this is staying in kind of my sentimental disc. I don't keep all my ace discs. I sold a lot of them. Then we have this Isaac Robinson signed chariot for when I won that practice round. And we're just gonna kind of keep this on the sentimental one because Isaac's a buddy and that's awesome. And then lastly, the nuke from last video that AB gave me, AB signed. He almost hit a Porsche with it and uh, yeah, I'm gonna, this, I might take this one out with that Pharaoh and see which one can hit 500 first because this thing is a bomber. It feels good. Yeah, I feel like I ripped that. And then of course, this destroyer that we already talked about. So this is kind of my sentimental disc up here. I don't have a lot of them. 
I could be persuaded to part with some of them, but no need to right now. If you're still watching, massively appreciate you. I don't anticipate this video is gonna do crazy just cause it's a little all over the place. It's fun, but we got the Goodyear Disc Golf Mystery Box. That'll be a Banana Frog video. The Ryan Mystery Box, that'll be a Banana Frog video. For main channel videos coming out soon, this, what is this? Oh, I remember what this is. This is a company that is making this out of recycled ocean plastic. I think this is called the Sea Turtle. Actually, it feels good. I'm really excited to throw these. I think this might actually be for Banana Froth instead of the main channel. I think that's what the plan was. We'll get to the main channel last, I guess. We also have a bunch of Yikun discs to review, which Infant sent me out when I was in Texas. They have a distance driver, a, flippy, a couple flippy fairway drivers, and like a mid-range style. And so I'm excited to get out and like throw a full round with just these guys. That'll be coming pretty soon. On top of that, we have two putters that I was given in Austin from some of my favorite pros. We got one from Eric Gokley, which is one of his newer Tour Series discs. It's a Theos from Alpha Discs. Overstable, slow putter. So kind of like what my Premium Marvel is, but it feels different, it feels much more rounded over, which is exciting. And then on top of that, we're just gonna throw it in there as well, because I really like Erica a lot, and it is a inner core with the Erica Stinchcomb badging. Go down. that's what it is. One more disc over here which is the Pace Pierce, Page Pierce Prototype Drive. There was a little less hype around this disc than I anticipated that there would be. And then I was planning on making full videos with it and then I ended up throwing it in the water and then I had to get it back like a week later. So fortunately the timing just messed up because I launched it into water on my second ever throw during a different video. On top of that, we also have oh, the TDs from way back when. So we're gonna compare it to the Aztec because I know a lot of you guys love the Aztec as well as the Mantra because there are a good bit of um, my original launch stamp, the Bonanza stamp Mantras that are on the site. I've heard they're really, really good discs. They're kind of flippier, nine-ish speed. So we'll see if they're relatively similar. I don't think they'll be too similar, but we'll see. We also have Guava from Clash Disc, the Planty Plastic. I love having Banana Froth. It just makes, I just want to review so many things and it's gonna be exciting. On top of that, what just came out is this Reach from Birdie Disc Golf Supply. It is Broderick's Tour Series, Signature Series disc, the Frisbee Club. Really, really excited about this disc. I'm really excited to throw it. I've heard that they are bombers out of the box. So we'll definitely rip these. I'm gonna be probably comparing it to this Halo Emperor, which is the last Halo Emperor that I have. I threw a lot of Halo Emperors into water over the last couple months. We have the Prodigy NHL collab Avalanche, as well as the Shadow Faxes. We have the Elevation Psychic. I have been touching so many cardboardy things. My hands are sensory overloaded right now, and so this feels interesting to say the least. Floppy disc. Excited to throw this as a driver. And last but not least, for Banana Froth. I really wanted to get these up earlier. I just, they sent them to me like the day before I got to Texas. So excited to be able to try to shoot, and I just, I couldn't even do it. The Neospore, whew, this might make a main channel video. We'll have to end up seeing, super fun disc. The cow. Klein Cosmic Fury 2, which my buddy Micah says that this is like his favorite throwing putter right now. Super, super solid. So I'm really excited to throw it. I really like the feel of the logic and these premium ones feel so good in the hand. These will either be one video or Banana Froth and main channel. Probably that's what I'm doing because sport's fun. Some other main channel videos coming soon will be Prodigy whole A-series lineup. And then the Doomsday Discs Apocalypse, which I've heard is a more of a stable tilt. So to compare it, we have a tilt. Very, very interested in how these are gonna fly. Put all the extra bags down below here. This is kind of how we're panning out looking. We got the basket over there, all the review stuff down on the ground right there, all of the discs. So we should be able to fill that out after taking some off. If you catch my drift, patrons. A little workout station-ish just so it's close to my desk so I can grab some like crippers and work on some forearm stuff. The pod right here for putting. I thought about turfing this initially but I decided against turfing it more than likely. I might still do some like rubber-based turf or foam-based turf. This is gonna have to stand up right up here. I wanted to make this a space where I can not only putt, but I can also throw and work in my form. <laughs> All right. Didn't quite realize how big this is actually gonna end up being down here, but I think it's still work. Honestly, all I think is that I might end up moving Oh, this just down a little bit. Oh no, it's held together by little screws. I'd have to take everything apart. So I was talking about turf. I think turf would look pretty cool. It'd be a little impractical to set down because I can't glue down here, just renting. Um, it's also a little lower ceiling, unfortunately, than I'd like. But I do still think I want something here because I want to be able to use the tech disc. And I think dropping down concrete over and over and over again would not quite work. I think what I might end up doing as well is we got a little beam up here. I'll probably screw something in or put down like that arm that I have that GoPro on earlier that I showed you and be able to put a phone up there so you can watch your form, walk, watch it from above, watch it from behind, put a couple different camera angles. But I have a space down here now that I can really like work out some form things without just doing shadow swings. Here, let me just pull out this rainmaker. I can work on my putt, I can work on my throw, I have all my discs. And so I'm hoping that maybe this will evolve a little bit. I might buy some horse stall mats, which are used in a lot of gym flooring, including the gym that I go to right now. That way I'm not just on concrete, but you do throw on concrete on your tee pads. The horse stall mats will probably cushion the fall of that tech disc. 
So at least something there for that, but I think I could, I mean, I could move it back a little more. The only thing I'm worried about is just kind of destroying this tarp. We're gonna need to figure something out because that already smacked that and just destroyed that tarp. Landlord, don't watch this. And that's a win. Now I looked over at my little weight rack. I don't know if 15 pounds will be enough. The next solution will definitely be sandbags. Oh, it's perfect. Wow, and it catches it. So I think getting something to cushion the fall for a tech disc, or maybe even just using it as is, and hoping I don't break it. I'll we'll have to see how the backdrop looks for some videos, but it's still very lairish, which I don't think we're really getting over. So, hard to make this place super pretty. They just remember there's one last thing to do, and I can let you go.